Ah, oh, the rain. It's a regular feature of the British climate, especially even through the summer, and it's a feature that many riders hate. But follow these easy tips, and you might even learn to love your wet weather rides. I just feel like maybe we're missing something. Nah, can't be. Oh, and before we get into today's video, remember to pop a quick like on this video and subscribe. We've got some brilliant content coming up in the next few months. You really don't want to miss it. Oh, and stick around until the end of the video because I am saving my golden best tip right until the end. If you want to enjoy a rainy ride, then your first line of defense from soaking is stopping the cold, grimy surface water from spraying up from your wheels. It's surprising just how dry a good set of mud guards will keep you, but we do realize that not every bike can take full length guards like these. Chances are that the friends that you ride with do actually like you. That's why they're your friends, but give them four hours of wheel spray straight to the face and you might not be flavor of the month. Fitting a mudguard when you're riding in a group isn't for your benefit, but the benefit of the people behind you. It's the courteous thing to do. And with the number of solutions on offer, there's not much excuse these days. Get one that will actually stop water from flying into the face of the following rider. A little flap that just protects your butt doesn't really count. So now that you've made sure that the riders behind you can see where they are going, it's time to focus on seeing where you are going. Now, personally, these Oakley radars, I absolutely love them. I think the lens is great there, but in the rain, it's just a bit too dark. So I will switch out these sunnies for something with a clear lens. Now, the good thing about clear lenses is that the basic nature of the lens means that they are a cheap upgrade. That means that you can do it for not too much money uh, and it's a very simple thing to do from day to day depending on the conditions. A clear lens might not make you look as stealthy but you'll definitely be able to see better. Stopping the rain from actually hitting your sunglasses in the first place is a great way to keep the lens clear. Now a cycling cap like this has a small peak that won't stop all of the rain, but it will do a good job of keeping most of it away from your lens. The Humble Casquette is a cotton cap with a stiff peak, and it was designed way, way back when cyclists first started cycling. The design hasn't changed since then, and they're a staple of our cycling wardrobe. The Casquette not only helps keep rain out of your eyes, but they add a surprising amount of warmth when the weather's cold too. They come in an array of jazzy designs and loads of colors, so you can even match it to your favorite kit or your bike. Now, I believe that the best purchase, or one of the best purchases that you can make is a very, very good jacket. Now, personally for rain rides, I pick something that is lightweight, packable, and properly waterproof. This one from Gore, it's over 200 quid, so they are a bit of an investment. But for me, I use these for way more than just rain rides. So in the end, they do become worth it. From around the start of September till late May, this jacket seldom stays at home. It will go with me on pretty much every ride, especially if it looks like it's gonna be raining, it'll either get worn or it will be rolled up and put in a jersey or a jacket pocket. If you buy a good one, then the shell should simply bead water and let it run straight off. The thin nature also means that these jackets dry really, really quickly. One final point, and one that I find extremely useful, is that if you've got a puncture, your friend has a puncture, or if there's a chilly descent coming up, then these provide a surprising amount of warmth. So rain jackets are a decent investment. 
When choosing a route for a rainy ride, I generally take one of two approaches. Sometimes I'll take more main roads in the hope that they're better surfaced, less likely to be covered in standing water, and should there be any standing water, less likely to have potholes lurking under the surface. That said, main roads have more traffic and that creates road spray, which can be very unpleasant. So sometimes I'll head for the quieter back lanes and just accept that I'll have to skirt round any standing water. While I find road riding in the rain to be fine, mountain biking when there's properly rainy day is brilliant fun. A few hours of sliding around in the mud and staying close to home is often quite a bit nicer than churning out miles after mile on the road. Just be prepared for a lot of cleaning when you get home. Planning a stop on a long wet ride not only helps to break up the effort of the ride, it can also help your body to warm up again and your stomach to get some hot food. Riding for a long time in the cold and wet seems to make my body seize up, so getting a nice cosy pub lunch by a roaring fire is the absolute dream. It just allows me to not only get some food, but also to stretch out cold and tired muscles. When you get to your cafe or pub stop, it's a great chance to change into a dry base layer if you've brought one with you. This is not only gonna help you stop getting cold, it's also just plain pleasant. Just remember, you wanna put it in a Ziploc bag like that so it doesn't get all sweaty in your pocket. While we're on the subject of bagging things, your phone and any other sensitive electronic devices, they wanna go in a bag too. Now, you can get a very fancy phone bag specifically for your phone, but personally, a sandwich bag works just fine. Gloves, caps, socks, arm warmers, leg warmers, everything these days seems to come in some form of water resistant or waterproof variety. The idea here is to keep your extremities dry for as long as possible but even the best overshoes and stuff like that, we do find that eventually water will work its way down through your socks or in through cleat holes. It is pesky like that, it does find a way in. A lot of waterproof accessories are very bad at letting water out. So if the sun comes out and the temperature increases, or if you push on on a climb, you can quickly find yourself getting wetter from the inside than from outside. That means that careful garment choice is really, really key. That said, keeping your hands, feet, and head as dry as possible for as long as possible, that's gonna make a rainy ride so, so much more pleasant. Okay, the biggest and best tip that I promised you at the start of the video, well, that is the simple fact that I'm gonna go and meet a friend for a ride. That is definitely gonna get me out the door and it means that I'm gonna love that ride no matter what the weather. I'm generally far less likely to disappear back under my duvet if I wake up on a Sunday morning and the rain is falling if I've planned to meet a friend. My friends are also just as stubborn and just as stupid as I am and none of us wants to be the one to say that they don't want to ride that day because it's a bit wet out. So all this does is means that we are definitely going to be meeting up when we said we were going to meet up. Once we meet up, the rain never seems as bad because we're focused on things like quality banter, the route for the day, and who might have had one too many the night before. Riding with friends never fails to make a ride in the rain far, far more pleasant. That is, of course, unless one of them, and I am looking at you, forgets to bring mud guards. So there are our biggest and best tips for making a rainy ride far more pleasant. If you've got your own, leave them down in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe this video. We've got so much more coming up.